Hello. Welcome. Welcome. So I did a little bit more work off camera on the VGA display. I forget what I showed last time, but I spent a little bit of time figuring out what the most intuitive way of displaying the stuff down below would be. So I added in the ALU op here, which is just shown as a symbol to indicate which one it's going to do. So there's add, there's subtract, there's compare, which is two angle brackets, and then move is just an arrow. And then I use that information to also figure out what parts to not display for the instruction at hand. So there's a few things that are wrong, like jump doesn't have the value moving into the program counter, and we'll fix that once we have relative jumps, and it's using the ALU to calculate the jump address, but we haven't gotten there yet. But otherwise, it looks pretty good. You can figure out what it's doing based on the information on the screen, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. I also changed the Fibonacci program a little bit so that it figures out all of the Fibonacci numbers up to uh, what fits in assigned 16-bit number. But anyway, I'm Totally sidetracked already. This episode is about overflow flag, which turned out to actually be easier than I thought. I guess I figured it was hard because I didn't understand it. So in doing a little bit of research between episodes, I figured it out. So yes, so I'm not gonna go into any more details about this. So one of the issues is I keep adding outputs so that I can send them over to the front panel and both the CPU and the front panel keep getting larger. <laughs> um, and also this front panel down here is completely outdated now. I have a much better way of displaying this information and I haven't updated it in quite a while. In some cases it's actually quite broken. Yeah, but that's not what this episode is about. Let's finish the ALU. So ALU, let me just make sure I haven't broken anything in all of the tests pass. Um, this one is still broken. I still need to fix it. I haven't done that yet. But otherwise, I think it looks good. I'm not sure why some of these have errors creating the circuit. I probably need to figure that out at some point, but it runs, so uh, it's what it is. Okay, so ALU, ALU. Um, last time we had this, and we stopped before we converted this, because what we need is the negative flag as well as the overflow flag. So overflow is when you have an addition of two positive numbers and you get a negative number or vice versa. You have two negative numbers that you're adding together and you get a positive number. So then that indicates that you got an overflow condition where you've overflowed into the sign bit which is bad. So you essentially are destroying the information in the sign bit, which is the topmost bit. So what do we do about that? Well, uh, we can actually easily detect those two cases just with a AND gate with three inputs. So we have the case where there's two positive numbers. So how do we detect positive numbers? Well, it's just the topmost bit, right? So if we've got a 16-bit number, if we take the very topmost bit, then that will be our sign. So we need to take that for both of these, both of these inputs, and we take it after this negation here. So we take the, the direct inputs into the adder here. And we also take the direct output of the adder. So... Let's put it here, and let's give it a name. L is negative. A little bit of space here. Okay, and then we need R prime is negative. And then we have the sum is negative. And I'm going to move this right here, I guess. That is fine. Okay. So if left and right are positive, but sign is not, and just to free up room, I'm just gonna remove 
this because we're going to remove it in a moment anyway. So if that's the case, or really it's just the opposite of this one, they're both negative and we get a positive, then that makes our overflow. So then, well, this is actually the negative flag. So we could just rename this N. So our logic then was either N is equal to V or N is not equal to V. So this is an AND and this is N not. And I don't know which one is which, but we'll just figure that out by running our tests and seeing which one fails. We're going to need a NOT gate and an AND gate. N and V. And there's our overflow. I'm just going to put it right there. I think that's it. Let's say we have minus two and we have one and we want to know if it's less than minus two is less than one. But keep in mind this is negated, so this should be uh, greater or equal. And we also have to do the comparison here. So compare is four. Okay. So we did not overflow and we're not skipping. So it's correct. Yeah, and now we are skipping. Okay. So that seems to work. So then um if we have an overflow, which I think we could do something like that. Uh, well, it's probably better to not make it. Uh, let's try a like that. Okay. Um, we're subtracting. So then there shouldn't be an overflow. But if we make this negative, then it should overflow. Yes, it does. And this should still be less than, mm, is this, hmm, I think that's correct. Well, let's run our tests. <laughs> no, I got them backwards. So the nice thing about tests, you can just guess and check. Um, no, it's not that one, it's these two. Um, hmm, it's still saying it failed. Why would that be? Uh, did I swap the wrong ones? I don't, I don't think so. Let's switch it back. Maybe I just didn't save. Did it still fail? Interesting. What could be going on there? I don't think this is correct because as I'm changing R, it doesn't change the value that is coming through here. Um, this might need to be an XOR, come to think of it. Let's have a think about this. So it's greater than if these are the same. Yes. So to check if they're the same, that's not an AND, that's an XOR. That's what the problem is. So XOR is false in this case, and XOR is true in this case. Yeah, that's what the problem is. Okay, well, that's easy enough to fix. Oh no, four is here. So here it's greater than, here it's less or equal. I think that's correct. Okay, it's saying they failed, so hopefully this time I can just swap these around. That's passing. Sweet. Okay. So yeah, it was a little bit tricky, uh, but not too bad. So the other thing that we need is a logic unit, actually. Hmm. I'm just going to turn this into a tunnel.
This XOR is going to be one of the logic gates. Uh, I'm going to put tunnel in there. And I'm trying to figure out how to decode the, the op in the best way. I kind of just want to move this out of the way here. Okay, so we have nop at zero. We have add at one. And I'm going to say that subtract is at this. Then the logic functions are when this is active. So I'm going to split this out and say, uh, So not is at zero, add is at one. I'm putting subtract at two, which is just the same as this. Let's change this. Uh, let's make it a three input uh, with the last two inverted. Or the first bit. Oh, I guess only two. So that and that says only two. Okay. Nop, add, subtract, pair, move, XOR, and an OR. And you may be wondering where NOT is, because often you would have NOT, and we're even calculating NOT right here, so we could do NOT. But actually, if you XOR a number with negative 1, you get NOT. And so I don't really need to spend an instruction on not if I can just easily XOR with negative one, and I can in a single instruction. So there's no efficiency gains to having a not instruction. So I'm not going to have one. So these are not 16 bits, I guess. Nope. Seems to work. Okay. Um, well, our tests won't pass because we haven't updated our microcode. Uh, yeah, no, they all fail. All right, let's update our microcode. Microcode, here we go. So, not add, and I've moved subtract here and compare here. And actually, it might be better to move these around. So, XOR and OR, I believe. Yeah, I'm just trying to maintain a pattern in here. Compare has the left going out, as does no ALU. And then move has the right going out, which is similar to this, but different line. So then it just leaves open some optimization possibilities in the future. But yeah, I mean, we're not doing that yet. I mm, wonder if we should keep these in the same order. And we have one left over for something. Not sure what. Hmm. Decided to swap these around. I think that's what's going on. Yeah. Tests are passing. These are not, but I will fix those off camera. I've been meaning to fix this one for a while. I did a little bit of changes to the decoder, and I'm guessing that's why it's all broken. Uh, but our test suite passes. We don't have test suite for the new instructions, but I will add that off camera as well. So one thing that's kind of interesting in here is just how slowly the front panel goes. Kind of makes the simulation of the front panel kind of useless because it's so slow. And that's just because the currently running at 200 and something kilohertz. So it's just not running fast enough to do a decent job at updating the display. There's not much that can be done about that other than figuring out how to drastically reduce the circuit involved here. Anyway, 
I think that's everything for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.